Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today we're going to talk about how to move a little bit faster with your mouse inside of Studio One. When I watch people work, especially if they're relatively new to music production, one of the biggest things I notice is it just takes them a long time just to navigate. So some of that just comes with experience. Some of it comes with someone saying, hey, you know there's a faster way to do this that will save you tons of time? That's what this video is about. Now, will any one of these things I'm gonna show you save countless hours on its own? Maybe not, but if it saves you five seconds here and there every time you do that specific task, that starts to add up. And for me, I love being as efficient as possible without feeling rushed. But I, if I can do something in three seconds rather than 10 seconds, I'm gonna choose that one every time. So if you don't care about that stuff, move on. This video is not for you. But if you do, there might be one or two tricks here that you didn't know about that will make your life a little bit easier. So the first thing has to do with setting something like a plugin or really any parent well, almost any parameter in Studio One to its default setting. So that could mean this fader, for example, is down here, and we wanna just kinda of reset things and put it back at its default location, which is zero, which is unity on the fader here. Now, a lot of people might just do this, and then you see you can't quite get it to zero, and you just, now it's stuck in your head that it's at plus point one and you can't stop thinking about it for the rest of the day you're lying in bed at night thinking that fader wasn't at zero here's how you do it you just hold down command on the mac and click the fader and it will jump to its default position now typically speaking i know pc users you get angry when i show you the mac it's just what i use i can't show you what i don't use i don't have a pc in this house i don't i'm not against it i just don't so that's how you do it on the pc i believe it's control it might be alt guess what? You can find out super quick. Then you can write yourself a note, st sticky note on your screen and you'll know forever. But you just hold down whatever button that is. For me, it's command to either control or alt for you and click the button and it will jump to its default. Now, that works in a lot of different places. So you learn it once and you can repeat it wherever you want. So for example, I can move up here and if I want to put this panner back to center, I've decided, you know what, forget it. I don't like the panning that I have. Let's just move it back to the center. I can painstakingly drag it and see it never, it never goes to the one. Or I can just command click on that parameter. Bam, it's back at its default. Guess where else this works? Um, on plugins. I want to send this gain back to its default setting, ceiling back to its default, threshold back to its default. Bam, it just works. It works in... Fat channel. Let's send these parameters back to their default settings. Command, click, command, click, command, click, command, click. Boom goes the dynamite. Command, well, that's not moved. If that was moved, command, click. Even this one. Okay, that doesn't do anything. But on the knobs, it will jump it back to its default setting. Uh, so that's the first thing I want to show you. And it can work. You can do it across multiple channels. It, you, you'll find other uses for this than you realize. That's one of the fun things about Studio One. Sometimes just holding a button and clicking, you'll discover things you didn't know were there before. Now, another one. Let's say you're not wanting to move this back to its default setting. But let's say you're, this is, let's find a vocal track. Here's a vocal track. And let's say this vocal right here, this is my vocal bus. Let's say I want to turn it up, but I just want to turn it up a couple of dB, a, a small adjustment. And I'm moving the fader and I just, I want to move it more smoothly. I want to fine tune that adjustment. Right now it's kind of jumping quite a bit from nine up to five with a small movement. What I can do is hold down shift. Don't change anything else. Just click and drag while holding shift. Check it out. It will now move one tenth at a time. So I can do a big, huge move. So if I think this one just needs to be turned up maybe a half dB, I can just go like this. And I'm good to go. That was maybe 0.6. I didn't see what it was to begin with. But this is how you do fine adjustments. Same thing here. You saw when I was trying to get it back to zero, I couldn't quite get it there. I can hold down shift, and now I can drag this and go through every single possible parameter in between. And yes, it works everywhere. I'll show you a bonus place where this is kind of fun too. Let's say you're using Pro EQ, uh, and you want to make a smooth adjustment to this gain right here. Same idea, hold down shift and drag, and it will move very slowly. I don't use that very much, but I will tell you one place where I use it all the time. If you're doing something like this, like a notch filter, that's what we call it, just where you're taking EQ and you've gone pretty narrow with the Q control right here, 
when you're doing this, if you're in here clicking this and moving this around, if you just scroll with your mouse while hovering over an EQ point, it'll automatically adjust that Q or that width control. You can see it moving. I'm scrolling with my mouse and it's adjusting that way. And if I hold down shift, nothing. So it doesn't, that doesn't work here. But th this is a fun one that relates to scrolling and moving quickly. If you use Pro EQ a lot and you find yourself finding specific frequencies and narrowing in, that can be an easy way to just narrow that sucker down uh, without having to come over here and turn the knob. I know you may, think, you may be thinking, Joe, that's just a little movement. It just takes, what, a second? Those add up over thousands of times over the course of mixing a project. So um, I'm, just, I'm just saving you time, and time is money, so I'm saving you money. <laughs> See how I got there? Pretty cool. A uh, couple other things that you may know or may not know I want to throw in here because it all kind of ties into clicking and getting faster. One of them is you may decide that, like, say this vocal, back to the vocal example. Let's say you just know I want to turn this down three decibels. You can click on the number, single click on the number, and just type in the new figure that you want. So let's say I want to go roughly 3 dB quieter. I could just go to minus 11 and press return and it will jump. Uh, I, I recently was working with a client. That's the only way he adjusted volumes was doing, like, if he wanted this to go down half a dB, he'd do minus 1.5. I don't think that's the best way to work. I think in general, occasionally, that's fine, and it's good to know that you can do that. You can do it for these two. I can go left 100, or left 199 does it too, and it'll pan it hard left. Um, it's good to know that that's there in case you want to be very specific. But generally speaking, if you're wanting to do small adjustments, I would just hold down shift and just drag it that way. Don't be so such a stickler for it has to be exactly 0.5 down. That, that's, that's math. That's not music. Um, music involves a lot of math, but don't go too hardcore into the math game. The other thing you can do, in case you didn't know, if you've got multiple channels you want to adjust at the same time, you can actually select those and then adjust all those parameters together without having to use any grouping or anything like that. So let's say I want to turn all of these purple tracks down. I click the first one, I hold down shift, I click the last one, they're all selected, and then I can move those faders, and I can even actually adjust the panning on them as well. Oh, look, and it knows which ones are right and left. I didn't know it did that. That's pretty cool. It only moved those and I guess it's kind of moving the left panner or the right panner, and I can move these together as well. It's acting like it's grouped, but as soon as I click away and they're not all selected, they don't move together. That's super handy. I almost never use the group feature for a lot of things because I can just select things and I can you know solo them together, move them together. Final thing, in case you didn't know, on your keyboard, if you want to solo, mute, or record something, or record enable a track, you just have to press the corresponding letter on the keyboard. So I select the tracks that I want to start recording on, and I press R. That record enables the track, or I press S to solo, I press M to mute, and I can press R to turn that off, and M to turn that back off. It's pretty handy. So in case you didn't know you could do that, you can do that with just one channel, S, M, R, or you can select multiple channels and do that as well. I use that all the time. If you find yourself going and clicking these buttons a whole lot, and let me get, if you start paying attention to the way you work, you may find that, holy crap, I'm clicking these a whole lot. Guess what? You don't have to anymore. Your hand is already sitting on the keyboard. If you're like me, my hand's just right here waiting to be used. Might as well. I want to hear what this gang vocal sounds like. I don't even look. My finger's just over the S ready to go. Solo. 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 These little speed additions to your workflow will help you get faster, of course, but really what's ultimately happening is you're making more music in less time. So you can take the same three month span and maybe instead of making one song, you've made three or four songs because you've sped up your workflow. And guess what? Once you start doing that, you get even faster. You'll be doing a whole song in an afternoon if you stick with it. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See ya.